kā mēs iepazinājāmies ar Kristu, bet, bet kā man, man ļoti patīk, ka, ka vīriešiem ir instrumenti. Ja? Tas uh, ir ne tikai mūzikas taisīšanai, bet urgi, slīpmašīnas un tam līdz. Ja Kristam ir festūra, pilnas komplekts ar instrumentu, ja viņš ir pats savā mājā, krāsos sienas, līdz grīdas, mēgals taisīšanas un tam līdz. Tad ir cilvēks, kas ne tikai ir radoši mūzikā, bet arī, bet arī zinu, kā lietas darīt. Ja? Bet um, tā, jūs zinat, Krisu no Tekno konkursa, kinetika konkursa žūrīs šogad. Un, un, un man ir tas tā kā, privilēģija vai, vai gods sanācis satik tiešām dažādas izcilas mūzikas, kas lieto mūsu instrumentus, kas, kas lieto daudz cits instrumentus, un mēs mazliet iedodam viņiem kaut kādu papildus aspektu radošumam, bet Kris ir īpaši ar to, ka viņš īstenībā, mēs esam daudz runājuši par sintezātoriem, par bumbašīnām, un viņš teica, ka īstenībā tas klausītājs beigās, kad klausās miksu, Viņš patiesībā nevar pateikt, vai tur ir 909. bumbašīna, vai tur ir uh, minimūga verķis izmantots, ne? jo īstenībā viss tas noslēpums ir, kā beigās treks tiek māsterēts un uh, kā beigās tas viss izklausās kopā. Un uh, tāpēc es kaut kādā intervijā es teicu, ka Kristus redz ir nevis uh, instrumentu gīgs, bet, uh, bet producēšanas gīgs. Ne? Un, un viņam ir tiešām tas skills panākt uh, to, lai uh, arī vienkārši instrumenti skan superīgi. Un, uh, un tāpēc, uh, tāpēc jā, es iedomāju, ka mēs varētu uztaisīt šo workshopu, lai viņi cilvēki padalā, padalās pieredzē un uh, pastāsta, kā, kā viņi panāk šo tur uh, burvību ne? Un, un kā viņi panāk, uh, lai viņu treki ir uh, skan labi, ir klausīti un ir super populāri. Un Kris, nu, varbūt viņš pie mums nav tik ļoti zināms, ja, bet viņš tiek uzskatīts par vienu no Eiropas techno tēviem, ja, sevišķi Beļģijā. Viņa daudz darbojas ārzemēs un viņa galvenā atziņa ir, ka īstenībā techno un reivu kultūru un narkotikas bija divi. Ne? Tā kā <laughs> Kris padalīsies tagad pats savos pieredzēs un tā. I am told how great okay. person you are. Thank you, Gears, for this incredible. <laughs> nice I, should, I, should I speak in the, in the microphone? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, uh, oh. Because you will be in frame. <laughs> ah, you want me in frame? Okay. I, I wanted to be close with the uh, attendance, but anyway. Yeah, Geertz, uh, thank you for this uh, amazing introduction. Uh, I hope you only said good things about me, so um, yeah. So um, yeah, my name is Chris. Um, uh, like Geertz uh, already told you, I, um, in 1990, I started um, like the whole techno um, craziness uh, from Belgium. Uh, now it seems like obvious, but back in those days it was not obvious. It was like a, a very niche market. We were like um, just a couple of people really doing it. Um, in Germany you had like Gem and Spoon, uh, together with Sven Veit. And then uh, in England you had like uh, Liam Hollett, which everybody knows from the Prodigy, uh, with some couple of other of guys. Uh, in France, um, I think uh, Daft Punk was already doing stuff, but not on, on that level. Uh, the Netherlands was doing good, but not with uh, all the commercial boys that we know now. And then in Belgium, uh, there were like a um, uh, couple of guys that did the whole new beat scene. Um, and then after the new beat scene, what they did, you know, they, I call it, they, they did sped, sped up uh, new beat. So it means, you know, the structure stay, stay the same, and they just sped it up, so it, it went quicker. So when I come in the game, you know, I come from a completely different background. Uh, actually, my uncle was only 10 years older than me. 
My father had like a brother when he was 21, so which was quite surprising for him. And my uncle was like, uh, like my brother. And so I had this whole culture from Led Zeppelin, uh, the Sex Pistols. Um, my mother is French. I had like this whole culture from Serge Gainsbourg and the whole French thing. And then my father was like in Latin music and James Brown and so. And the whole melting pot, you know, where I'm like uh, in, you know, gives that I came with something, um, I guess, really special. Uh, and actually, I wanted to make like a Sex Pistol record or Led Zeppelin record with synthesizers, which is crazy, but, but it's exactly what I did. Um, just to um, tell you why I'm doing this today, like like with drum machines and going into the computer and then make something out of it, something different. Because back in, those, in, in our days, we had like, uh, I started with one instrument, which was a W30 from Roland. It was a sampler, 30 hertz. I had nothing else. So if you see what we have here, it's already the possibilities here are endless. The possibility with a W30 were not endless, so there were some boundaries because you didn't have effects built in. Uh, it was only, like I say, 30 hertz. The sampling time was very short. It depended if you take it on 30 hertz or you could go to 15 kilohertz. And uh, what I learned a lot, you know, like if you had like a mini MOOC, which was a monophonic synth, you know, if you wanted to make it polyphonic, what we did back in the days, you know, we put it in a sampler. And then it became very interesting. So it became very interesting to do um, uh, stuff like that. And um, that's why... Um, even now, you know, I still work like that. I work with like uh, analog stuff. I will take like one line or I will take, take a rhythm and I will now, I will bring it in the computer and then I will, uh, you know, I will uh, change it in the computer. Because for me, it's, uh, it's an interesting way of work and actually it's the same process that I do already for 35 years, uh, but just uh, different. Um, so yeah, to go back, you know, uh, I started the whole thing. I was the first uh, artist to go to uh, New York to the Limelight, to a very famous club. Only Aphex Twin played there, Prodigy played there. Uh, I think uh, Alevo played there. Um, Dewey Beltram was kind of guest DJ. But for a, for a live act, because I'm not a DJ, some people think I'm a I'm not a DJ. I'm like a, I'm still a live artist, although I get requests, but I refuse them all. So um, and so to play live in the limelight, which opened up, you know, a whole new thing: meeting people in New York, uh, meeting people in the states, and and, and etc. So um, what was really uh, crazy was like. Like Liam Hallett also only had like, uh, from the Prodigy, only had like a W30. So we were kind of all on the same machines, you know, because it was like, uh, back in those days, it was, um, yeah, something affordable. So yes. Um, maybe uh, I would start that everybody introduce himself a little bit and why you're attending and what you are, you are doing in music. So then when I start to do stuff, I can, you know, um, uh, shape it, you know, to what people are uh, doing in here. So, I don't know who wants to start to introduce himself. Hey, Nina, maybe you should Nina. start. Uh, <laughs> yeah.
Okay, cool. Very cool. Okay, nice. I guess you're next. Wow, two Chris's. Uh, I'm a DJ and live performer. So nowadays I'm more playing live music using drum machines, synthesizers. Okay. Uh, so yeah, before that I was uh, producing music using the Ableton Live okay. like 15 years ago. But now I'm switching to like, uh, using the instruments, live instruments. OK, cool. Nice. The lady on your My name right? My Eva, I'm DJ Echo, I'm DJing, I'm not currently producing, mm -hmm. who knows, maybe after this course Maybe after this course, <laughs> yeah. it's, we have a new producer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hi. Oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Elvis. You were, in, you were already into the course, I see that. You know. Yes, you yes. Were, yes. Like, My name is Elvis, and I come, uh, yes, I'm DJ, uh, and Music, but I come here to meet Insider okay. uh, live because I meet you in a clubhouse some COVID times. Maybe you remember the ah, rooms, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. only Gally made some ah, nice yeah. rooms in Los Angeles. Oh yeah, wow. And there was Elvis <laughs> Wow. wow, wow I want wow. to see you live. <laughs> ah, <laughs> That's the only reason I'm here. <laughs> okay. No, okay. Okay, so for you it's already over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, yeah, it's yeah, Elvis, yeah. Wow, that's that's amazing. Yeah. Or he's going to Belgium actually. Um, I, I will go. Right. She she will be Or he will be or in or my place. Or he will be in my place and oh. she will go to AD in Amsterdam. Mm. Yeah, and I think Yurtz is also going yeah. to AD. Yeah, okay. So it will be so yeah. we'll go to Belgium, I think I yeah. will go. No, you have to go to Amsterdam. Ah, yeah. Still yeah, yeah, no, not to my place. <laughs> <laughs> And ask you to my place is like, yeah. 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 <laughs> we should definitely should visit his place. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, hey, hi, uh, my name is Kencha. Hey, I'm a call no. DJ as well. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of hardware gear, so I do a bit of light field okay. stuff, and you know, just you know, I, I love playing and you know, exploring. You know, possibilities and sound design and you know, rhythms and so on. So, yeah. Oh, well, currently I'm living in actually in Luxembourg, so we are kind of neighbors, wow. I guess. You want to visit me too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I've been going to Belgium for some time. Ah, yeah, yeah. So. You're going out in Belgium also? To, to clubs or something? Sometimes. Well, no, not so much anymore, yeah. but yeah, when I was younger, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, fuse and stuff. Oh, and fuse. Fuse. There's a lot of drugs in view. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. you should go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious to yeah to see or you know, how you work and yeah. learn. Okay. Yeah, just so everybody knows. So my method, it's not like the holy grail of it. It's just it's what I explained here. So everybody does whatever you want. I'm not like a prophet who tells you you have to do this and that. It's just the way I will show you how I work and how I you know um, create like like beats or rhythms and how I transform them then afterwards. So don't shoot me, you know, if you don't agree with my method. It's just like I'm just showing, you know, it worked for me because I'm I'm there for thirty two years already. And so I guess it worked for me. So it, it, it doesn't mean it's your workflow or or thing. But if you can pick something up, you know, I'm, 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 I would be a very happy man, you know, after the course. So, yeah. Okay, so we have like two Gentlemen in the back, you know, who are you? Tell me everything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hello. Hey. Um, we don't make music, we make a decoration about the events. 
So okay, what do you make? Sorry. Uh, visual. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay, cool. So, and you both do the same stuff. So. No? He's making music. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy. Okay, cool. So, um, the, the microphone again? Yeah. Um, who's familiar with the Perkins? Who's familiar with the, the Perkins, actually? Yeah. Is it, do, does someone have a Perkins or, or, or? Perkins? Perkins, yeah, sorry. If, yeah. Okay. So when I will start, you know, like um, to, to, to bring like a simple rhythm in.
thing that I would typically do, make like a random beat. Um, and then from there, you know, I will take it into the DAW, which I will do now. And then I will explain you some tricks that I do from there. So let's record this thing. in the DAO, we can do like what I always do. It's like I actually copy this track. So normally you do one of track recordings. You, you do yes, that. but the magic is coming now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it would be a mono track, but since you're like in the DAO, you, know, you can apply plugins in it. My favorite plugins, and I told also to Geertz, you know, the plugins where I go to and which are unbeatable for me and which I like a lot are actually the, um, let's get, I don't know where this quick help is from, okay. Um, the plugins that I like are the sound toys. Uh, those are like, to me, if you, if you buy this, you can, you can do everything. Um, Let's put uh, filter free. So I'm going to the whole process. Huh? I didn't prepare anything special so that you see really how I do it. I guess in all DOS it's the same. You know, if you're like in Ableton, uh, I'm, I'm in Logic for like 25 years, so. Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, 
let's see if we can do something. I will show you something else that I do a lot, you know. Um, effect in the uh, sound toys it's the um, the pen man which I really like and so you can create like more also more dimension uh, in your track you know like um, some something like that something like that in uh, the computer or something, I never do that. So I'm, I'm always like on a 909 or 808 or a Lindrum or a uh, Perkins and, um, and then program stuff and then put it actually in the, uh, in the dot to make it more interesting. Uh, yeah, like I said, a little bit like I worked when I was younger, you know, taking stuff and not being able to have like uh, polyphonic synths and then transform it uh, in a sampler and have like monophonic. So it's actually the same, uh, yeah, the same, uh, the same way, so. I have a question, Chris. Yeah. Um, you say you all know the sound toys, uh, all the yeah. ones mm -hmm. are your favorite ones, and so how do you figure out which one specifically to use on, uh, on uh, a track? Or well, the answer is very simple. It's like when you start with uh, Eurorack, you don't know where you start. You just have to learn like plug-in. Pl and I know sometimes I know them like that. Everybody here, I defied everybody to say, okay, make me something like that and, and I can do it only with the sound toys. Because I, I know the stuff so well, you know. So you spent uh, plenty of time just uh, going through plugins yeah. and uh, checking, you know, what, yeah. what they can do. Yeah. I, I, you know, there's like a, a lot of presets also, but I create a lot of my, in, if you saw, if you see my uh, studio at home, you know, I created like so many sounds myself. 
It's I started I start always from a, from a, a like let's say a preset or something, but uh, but like the delays, I never I'm I'm going randomly in. So because that that I know and uh, yeah, don't forget well, uh, maybe some people don't know, but Santos why to me are they so great? They're all based on algorithms from the H3000 from Eventide. And that's why it has so much mojo. And you hear it directly, you know, you hear where I come from and then where I go with a track. And, and that's only, well, I'm only busy uh, for like five minutes, but I, you know, I can make like a whole thing based on that and make it interesting, you know. I have a follow-up on that question. Do you use some uh, hardware effects as well? Yes. Sending, uh, them, uh, in yes. Film and recording them? Yes, but uh, I, I always, so I have a, a, a large mixing board, which was uh, specific made for me. Uh, it's a custom board, it took eight months to make it, and it was during COVID, so it took like a real long time. So the way I work, uh, when it comes out of the computer, I have like an Aurora 16 out. Uh, this go into the mixing board, like it's a mixing board, you know, back in the days it was a 16 track. Normally the analog tape was coming in. Well, now the everything was there uh, from the computer goes in those 16 uh, inputs and then I sum from there but it goes to a whole analog chain I have like a compressor um, I have like I have two no I have two compressors I have like a, a kind of a um, SSL compressor with recall uh, and I have like a, a tube compressor uh, I have like um, a Pultec EQ and then I have like a special EQ was made also on my specs, like a, a kind of a tilde queue. Uh, Do you know the difference? Like, can you tell the difference mm -hmm. when you're using like hardware yeah. stuff? And, uh, Always. Digital? And you know where you can tell it? Especially when you go to vinyl. Yeah. When you go to vinyl, you do everything in the box and you print it on vinyl, it never sounds like when I go through my mixing desk and, and go on vinyl. It's, it's amazing the difference between the analog stuff uh, when you pass through analog stuff and uh, and 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 when you go on vinyl, so th th there's the main difference. I still believe you can't, uh, but it's what I told Geertz. You know, it's it's all about the interaction with the machines. Huh? It's when you when you have an EQ in front of you or here like the like uh, the Zen delay, which is to me wow, it's incredible when I play live. You know, the stuff that I do with it, I do like special effects with it, I do flanging with it, I do like. Um, delays with it, I can do all kinds of stuff and it's because it's, it's hands-on. In a computer actually you, you need like eight to do like one thing like I do now, you, it's like eight movements in the head, in the brain. Yeah. And, and when you have like knobs, you know, and of course I think, honestly, I think EQs came so far you can't tell the difference anymore. In, in a box or, or the hardware. But to be honest, what motivates you? This or this, <laughs> you know what I mean, and 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 also, uh, um, Geertz also said. So Chris said, uh, do do you do you use all your stuff? I say, no, not all the time. But you know, when I come into my studio and I see like five thousand knobs, you know, it's kind of a motivation for me. You know, it's, it has nothing to do with. Uh, um, it's it's all motivation. Uh, but then again, I came from there. Young, young, young kids, you know, they, they bought a, an Apple and there was like, uh, there was already like a program on it and they, 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 they learned it that way. Uh, a quickly story has nothing to do, but it was a very funny story. The guy, you know, because I, I, uh, my board, you know, it was mod uh, modified, heavy modified, you know, to my specs, but it's from um, uh, an existing board from the 80s. It's from, uh, it's an element, it's Saber. Uh, but uh, it's the board also where all the RNS records were made on. If you hear like Joey Beltram, uh, 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 JD, uh, 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 Boland, uh, all, all the stuff, you know, was really, really made on that board. So that board has a sound, you know, it, 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 it has this uh, techno sound. Uh, later on, I had like another board, uh, which was like an Amec, and I never could find the sound. It sounded flat. I could never find the... Uh, my way to that, all do quali quality wise, this was a much better board, but it never, and it, it was impossible to make like tracks on it. And the thing is, you know, to me, I work very quick, it has to go quick. If it doesn't go quick, you know, you slow down and you lose motivation. When you lose motivation, 
you you think everything what you did is not good, so it, it it's 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 whole it's a whole process. But to go back on the story of the board, so I found the board back, you know, at the guy, you know, I go to the I had the guy on the phone and the guy starts to ask me questions because he didn't want really want to sell the board. Because he had like people calling him in and then they didn't know and he was like kind of a little bit frustrated because he had to let it go, but okay. And I explained to the guy and they say, okay, the guy say, yeah, you know your stuff. I go to the guy and the guy starts to explain me. So there was like one guy, you know, with his friend, you know, who was like maybe 20 years old. And uh, he came in to, 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 um, to see the board. And then they see the faders, of course, because you have faders in your door. And then the guy asked, so yeah, okay, but um, where is the sound coming out, you know? Where, 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 where do you put the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, yeah, where are the plugins? So those guys, they thought, you know, the, it came with built-in stuff. So the synthesizers were in the board. So just to tell how people are like used to, they, if, you, if you never work to an, on analog gear, you, know, you, don't, un, you don't understand uh, the, the whole prosody. So it was quite a, a very funny story. So. Just mean there are two kind of artists one who make uh, mostly like this thing. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Yeah, exactly. So they, they yeah they stay they stay in the box. And then again, that there is nothing wrong. It's just what you what you want to feel. I feel when I go on, on analog when I work with this, I when I work with this method I go very quick. You know this what I've made now. You know I, I'm I'm pretty satisfied and I I can okay you need to produce it more and, and but you can yeah you can do like uh, yeah to meet some nice basic because it doesn't quite sound like a Perkins anymore but it surely doesn't sound like all the loop packs that you can buy that everybody's using mm -hmm. there is there is the big problem I t I told I say okay we're gonna have COVID and when we started the whole techno revolution or the whole rave scene uh, it was when the wall of Berlin came down because I was 20 and not even 20 and to me you know the wall of Berlin comes down was like wow if the wall of Berlin comes down then everything is possible that's the motivation that we had and I thought you know people will think you know well we're in COVID and COVID was very hard for some people it was very scary I was very scary and I thought you know wow if we survive COVID I see all those youngsters they're gonna they're gonna it's gonna explode you know we're gonna have like uh, like uh, a melting pot of sounds, like new sounds, and people are motivated, and we're gonna have like stuff, uh, um, new stuff going on. And COVID is finished, and you know what? They just pick up where they left. And there was not like this, um, to me, you know, electronic uh, revolution. So, and I, I think it's a little bit pity. And then another thing, but also, also uh, always tell you know I'm 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 somebody when something is now they're all in this hard techno and everything and uh, and uh, well just you know if I can give you like uh, an advice just go the other way you know uh, like back in the days when Gabber came everyone was making Gabber and I made uh, a record called Tyrone Noxious which is kind of one of the first filter disco tracks, you know, which was much lower. We we're talking about 126, Gabber was 200. Yeah. yeah, and everybody and everybody was saying I was crazy and I brought this record out until now it's a big classic. This record is still played like uh, when you go to uh, festivals, you will still hear after 27 years this record. Uh, so uh, I always say when everybody's going left, I'm going right. Why? Because there's much more opportunity, and if you fail, nobody saw it. But if you succeed, everybody sees you. So that's that. That's the goal. And you always have to do. You know, it's like an an, an antique market. Huh? Sometimes you see something, you're gonna see uh, like uh, I don't know, like a cable. You know, and you say, people say to me, why is he selling this? You know, who's gonna who's gonna buy that? And you say, you know what? There will be someday. There will be a buyer. And it's the same with music. If you believe in yourself, and 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 you say, okay, this is it, and and you want you want to come forward with what you are doing and really doing, some someday, like someone will pick up. And you know, it always starts with one person. Look at in my case. I come from Halle. Uh, 
Helen, it's not even like Korea. It's like a, a very small time. I did it in my bedroom. Um, I had no help and I had like a lot, a lot of like uh, uh, people who were like uh, against me and uh, a lot of negativity about the music because it was, yeah, it was direct music and it was, and the whole thing. But I, I kept on going and then suddenly, yeah, I'm playing uh, in the limelight in New York and then everybody was like, wow. Um, so yeah, that's a smile, uh, uh, like a, uh, s a little advice, you know, if you like a beginner, uh, and it goes for everything. It goes for if you're like in, uh, if you are in fashion or you are like in, in, uh, in visual vision things in, in music, uh, in DJing, it, 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 it all goes along. Someone will always pick up. You always will find someone who likes it and then uh, and then that's you how, how you you start like kind of like a, um, a revolution you know never give up you know even I know I could I could do I could uh, I told Geertz I could easily be uh, you know take it easy and do whatever uh, what people ask me or or or, or but I don't do it I always uh, well I like things difficult I don't like things easy so uh, I, I like to to uh, you know to um, to fight for it and, 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 and to get it. So, yeah. Another question is, um, yes, you Geert. spent like uh, over 30 years in, uh, in producing uh, yeah. techno, rhythm-based music. When it comes to rhythm pattern programming itself, how do you not repeat yourself? <laughs> Are there any tricks, you know, uh, well, when you program drum patterns? Yeah, well, that, that's it, you know, I, 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 um, I repeat myself. That's, that's, that's the whole problem. And then you have to, you have to try a way, you know, to get, to go, go over that, you know. But it's, you know, when you're in electronic music, uh, it depends what you want to do in electronic music because it's so wide, you know, so, but there's, everything is already done. You know what I mean? It, it just at, at a certain point, you know, when you program your patterns, it's how do you put like a different feel in it? You know, it's like, uh, but it's the same, eh? a drummer on stage, the drummer is a drummer. Eh? It always had the same sounds, you know. Uh, uh, I think uh, after Led Zeppelin, everything was done, you know, it's, it, 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 there's, there's, there's so much you can do. It's like with chords also, all the chords are used, you know. Yeah, but any, Tips and tricks, you know, we can. Uh, oh yeah, you want. Uh, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, you came up uh, so quickly with uh, such a great pattern. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, no. Okay. So what can we do? Okay. Are we on the purpose? Okay.
Yeah. For it's me. For the, yeah, but you, you know that you just press them specifically, or you just no, press because the steps. yeah, but because I know the steps and I, and I know where where I can make it funky. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of already in your head. Yeah. Oh yeah. One other thing that you don't know about me, I never go into the studio and and I and I and I fool around. I always go in the studio with songs that are ready to go. So that makes it very, sometimes it's very difficult for me because you, ha you have a song completely finished in your head and then you have to reproduce all the sounds because if, if the sounds are not like in my head, you know, then it's become frustrating. So then I have to give up on the song. Don't you get uh, off, off the axis when you have this like no. in your head and just your... No. When I, when I have it, I call up Geertz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like a, a 1983, you know, kind of groove you know, that you that you heard like in uh, in uh, in clubs, you know, like underground clubs back in in the 80s. That was before techno. But you had like all kind of music. <laughs> like uh, I don't know if somebody's familiar with Carlos Peron. I don't know if you, anybody knows him. It's very good. You should check him out. You know, it's it's kind of a little bit like. <laughs> What I, always yeah. make it okay. kind of what I should have done is like record it longer because that's how, how, how I really work. I, you know, I set everything up, I have a groove going on and then I let it go, you know, and then meanwhile, you know, I change while I'm recording, I'm changing the heights. After, you know, I can cut sections, you know, and then create like, okay. yeah, I can create like transformation like because this thing is endless. Like a 909, you're like stuck to, uh, to, to some notes, but here it's like, you know, it's like, yeah. 
record a long session with yeah. speaking and then you yeah. Yeah. select the yeah. best yeah. part, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. But a 909 is still the drum machine, you know, if you wanna if you wanna make that kind of music, you know, you put a 909 on a on a real analog desk and you crank it up on like the bass drum, you distort the bass drum like on my board, you know, it's like I yeah, I wish you could hear it, but it's it's you you um um uh, yeah, it's just amazing. You know, it's like if you want to do that thing of music, but this is much more interesting because it's uh, it 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 sounds completely different. And uh, if you want to do uh, yeah something different, you know, this is an, an amazing machine. Yeah. Because, but uh, during the live performance, how do you approach? Like I heard such uh, things like uh, build-ups, drops, and uh, how do you actually engage audience uh, when you have. Uh, a drum machine, for instance, and you know, well, yeah, how you build up the perf uh, performance. You know? um, the way I work when I when I play live, you know, before I took like all the um, um, I took like a lot of stuff with me, but now it's it's impossible because if you are a live artist and you say, yeah, you know, this is impossible. They will never book you. It's too many cables. So what I have, you know, I have a case. Everything is pre-wired, and I can set up in forty seconds. Actually, I set up quicker than a guy with his USB stick. <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. <laughs> it's true, because the guy with the USB stick, he has to go and then he has to go in the pile. He takes it slow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I come up, open up the case, put the put the plug in, take the computer, put the plug like one plug in the computer, and I'm and I'm ready to go. So for that, you know, um, so yeah, and of course because it's a case and it's pre-wired, you're kind of limited. You can't take like synths anymore with me. What I have with me is like a three three clone, who is building in the, the case. And then there's like a lot of stuff um, in the in in the computer, uh, but in the case it's also a mixing board like um, a model one from Richie, uh, and this is a nice board because I have like two analog effects. I have an H9 and I have the Zen delay. Like I say, the Zen delay is, is amazing. It's like a, a synth or a, a delay or a, a flanger on, on its own. So um, you get like really the live experience and then how you how i do it i have like a little controller a little like eye controller this controller i have like let's say like a snare drum there's like during my whole life there's always a snare drum like tick 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 you know like the dura cell thing tick, 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 you know like the little things yeah, that everybody that i hate but everybody likes so the one that you put your hands in the air you know so you put and then uh, i have this you know because then i can uh, i can do build ups you know whenever i want uh, and then, uh, and then the machine actually becomes something that um, is going with the songs, you know, like the songs who are uh, in the computer, and they go and and I go over it. But since I have like the model one, you know, you can actually it's not like with regular EQ, you cut the high and you cut the low. So what I can do is like make some kind of filter, you know, out of the song, and then and then put like a new uh, bass room in, let's say from the Perkins. And also put the highs in from the permits, um, and then it becomes again something completely, completely new. You know, so it's it's there's a lot of possibilities. Okay, but uh, with this uh, like modest setup, so can you make us uh, make hands in the air? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I could, you know, but uh, you know, you need like a typical like, uh, I, I, you know, what I have is like a typical line on line snare, I like like. Uh, uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's possible. Yeah, everything is possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why you want to put your hands in the air or, or something? Yes. No, no. I just um, you know the, the, I admire uh, like techno producers who can like uh, for uh, like prolonged period of time just uh, manipulate only kick drum and then yeah. uh, all of a sudden kick in something else and and, and so so yeah. I was actually more asking about this. Uh, Manipulation with audience, and you know, how you treat that to, uh, uh, when uh, when you build uh, drum patterns. Yeah. Um, well, if you <laughs> the thing with me is, you know, when they book me, you know, they of course it's like they want they want to hear some hits of me. Mm. So the thing is, you know, I I cannot come with that setup to a festival. And not playing like Boots on the Run or The Prophet or yeah, I told you that already. So I'm I'm kind of like stuck with that, and which is normal, you know. You don't go see, uh, let's say, uh, uh, what can I say? A good example, like uh, uh, 
yeah, let's say you go to Coldplay and, and they play like all new songs that you don't know because they want to have fun with put your hands in the hair with a drum machine. Yeah. So people will not be happy, you know. Uh, Struggle a bit. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, that's, that, that's the problem that I have because I, I made so many like club hits that the people are expecting that. I play. And listen, I go already far. I play them like very differently. That they are in the set, but it's like already heavy. There's like already heavy transformation going on during the lives. Uh, but sure, you know, yeah, um, I, I, with that setup, yeah, I can, I can play like uh, two hours, three hours, no problem. And program on the spot. So basically, no any preparation? No, no not preparation any. I told that. Gears, you know, this, uh, uh, when I play, you know, there's no, uh, well, this, of course, you know, uh, it has now a, car a card inside, but uh, when I played, um, uh, like I played in France, and uh, I had the Perkins, my Perkins with me, and there was nothing prepared. So uh, every, everything was done, you know, there was like, a, uh, I had the Ableton session with me, with some, you know, but there was a lot of Perkins going on and, 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 and nothing was prepared. So you don't prepare your patterns? No, your never. No, I can give you the card, you know, if you don't believe me, and I can, I can, I can, I can, I can really, yeah, yeah, no, no, I can really do it, yeah. You just have to come tomorrow and see. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically. Yeah, I can, I can really go, I can really go uh, on the floor, you know. And if I had my case, if I had the case with me, which was difficult to, because it's like 22 kilos and, but if I had my case with me, I could really show you, you know, because I'm, I'm really used, you know, what, what all, all the, uh, but maybe it's, it's the, um, uh, which is the Zen, okay, let's, let's see if we can do something. That I can do. In Ableton, I can do that. But a, a lot is done, you know. Now I can. I cannot really 
do it because normally this goes on uh, auxiliary output on my board. So I, because I can't, how do I explain that? I have to put the, the wet button all over. Oh, yes, yeah, 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 and, and but then everything is gone. Normally, this is completely in wet, and then with the mixing board, I'm, I'm like, I'm, yeah, I can yeah, put in what I want, you know. And then with the mixing board, I can create this. I can't do it now, but I can create like this kind of feedback, like an alarm, you know. And then you see everybody, yeah, <laughs> our drugs, our drugs is working. Hallelujah, <laughs> finally, you know. And then yeah, they go bananas, you know. Yeah. So, so that's uh, that's how I do it. Yeah. yeah just one more que question: Is do you ever send like MIDI from your door as well to your hardware? Yeah. Here I'm doing it. Huh? So there's like MIDI coming out to control. Uh, the, well, actually here uh, f to the to do the recording. So this is the master. I played a lot with the 909 when the 909 was the master. Also, uh, so the 909 was the master, and the and the 909 um, uh, took the computer with and took everything with you know because I, you know, the 909 never fails. So I was always thinking when the 909 is master and the computer is failing, I can still like I had once like long with uh, it was in the Omen with Sunvate, you know, I had like a, I took like the Atari computer. It was not even a laptop, like an Atari computer, and the 909 was master. And it was so humid, you know, that the computer failed. And I only had, like, the drums. And Sven, you know, he saw the problem, you know, what he started to do, like, was mixing, like, uh, um, yeah, stuff into it, so, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, but during live performance, for instance, you, like, program the drum pattern as you feel, but then you realize that, uh, the snare drum is not there, so you hope that people will not notice uh, while you're uh, <laughs> like switching the position of snare drum or uh, how do you No, but like that? I say, you know, normally the snare drum is like, it's like always going. Yeah, but for tomorrow's performance, yeah. you, you, will, you will design patterns on, yeah. uh, on, on, on fly. Yeah, so yeah. If you realize, or you will play safe and we will, will program snare drum like uh, like without experimenting. Ah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, no, I, I never play safe. Uh, you know, <laughs> here it's. So, yeah. Do you know how many children that I have? Yeah, even if you, <laughs> realize, yeah. if you realize that uh, the snare drum is not there, so how do you, how do you actually go out of the situation? <laughs> oh. How do you approach that situation? Yeah. When you go to some. Yeah, I do it, you know. I, yeah, I will, find the, I will find the solution, you know. I'm part of the solution, not part of the problem. <laughs> one, one day, you know, I had like, uh, I did a live and I, I stumbled over my MIDI cable. And what happened, you know, like for some reason, you know, all the volume was going down. And I, and I don't know, I didn't know what, what was happening. And then uh, I fixed it, you know, and, uh, and then ev everybody started to scream. And then the, the, the guy you know, who did the party came to me. Wow, you see, it was incredible, you know, because I had to stop everything for 30 seconds. I had to restart the computer because everything was fucked up. And the guy came to me later and he said like, uh, um, yeah, the break, the break was incredible, man. The break <laughs> was incredible. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm always coming, you know, I go in smelling like a rose and I go out smelling like a rose here. It's out of <laughs> every situation. It's also how you get out of these situations. Yeah. No, no, it's no. Some guys they stop and then they, Cry. yeah, no, no, no. But uh, I know people, you know, it, it, they, it, it, there's a problem. Or sometimes with the CGI, there's also a problem, and then they're standing there. But the, the big problem is, you know, you know, you, you can't say they. People don't know it's the, it's the technician. You know, like uh, um, there were like technical problems on with some DJs on big festivals, and then they, they're standing there, and there is you standing there. But people, you can't, oh, yeah, they're right in the newspaper. It's a technical problem. But people don't see it like that. The, your name, you're, you are there. And you have to find the solution. And, you know, if you're not sure, you know, then you have a backup. Like, I think Liam from the Prodigy, when he plays uh, with the Prodigy, he has, like, two computers. And I think one is purely for backup. That's he really starts... Smart. Yeah, he starts, uh, but that's how we all did, uh, did it back in the days. Also, when we were playing live, you know, we, we had like this, um, uh, uh, yeah, DAT backups. 
that we had with us. Because if something was going on, you know, you had to be able to do something. Even then, you know, that you have to fake it. You know, people want want people want to see a show. They don't want to see someone fail. You know, so you have to be, yeah, you have you, you have to be prepared for that. But like I say, like even. Uh, like even uh, the Kiss album, you know, Kiss Life, you know, from the 70s, you know, they, 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 I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the only album where everything was re-recorded in the studio because when you, you don't want something, put something live, you know, on a record, you know, when it doesn't sound good live. So you have to go in, you know, and fix stuff. And it's their best-selling album of all time. It's, th it's the album who is live, but who was actually completely replayed in the studio. Yeah, it's like a picture. Also, now we take a digital picture, and and you can change things. You know, you can, you can, you can, and you have. Yeah, there's. You know, nothing changed for all these years. It's already going on for years and years. People are, yeah, you're trying to do the best. You know, even if it's not right to do it like that, but they don't care. Chris, by the way, if you, if for example, you are in studio with the Pozzolini's uh, Jerry, do you have enough with the, those? Uh, no, no. In the studio, in the studio, everything is separated. So that that would be like uh, here. It's because yeah, we have like a small yeah. room, but th that would be separated. Yeah, yeah. Because then when you record, you know, I will I will record the four tracks at the same time in mono, and then afterwards you can in production you can still play with the four channels. Mm -hmm. I will do I will do two things. I will record all the channels together. And then all the, the channels apart. Why? Because sometimes when you when you record them uh, together, there's also something going on. You know that makes it more like uh, yeah, more. Yeah, Chris is mixing desk is like from here to to there, like a little later. Yeah, right? to it's after <laughs> to after <laughs> kinetic. You know. No, yeah, if how many channels you have? It's like I have. Uh, directly 46 channels plus 16. Are they all used? Yeah. I have, I, I, I have not enough. I, I'm still having a patch bay. Oh, so <laughs> in the effects you would also record a separate... Yeah, channel. effects on the board, I, that's what was done also to the board. Everything was rewired, so every effect goes to, let's say, let's to bus 7 and 8. So I can, when I record, you know, I can record all the, uh, all the effects. Uh, they are separately recorded, so I can also um, match them and edit them. Hey, hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but ev uh, in my studio, that's the reason why uh, why uh, Geertz came to my studio and, and he saw my studio. He said, "Wow!" He say, "I say it's all organized." Uh, Millennium Falcon was the headlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lego. Millennium Falcon. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm, I'm. Everything is possible. You can. Like uh, an input on my Moog One, you know, can can actually be used, but without going on your knees and and put a cable in. It's 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 all there. It has to be quick and it has to be like that's why all the all the synths, all the main synths, they are on the mixing board. You know, you want to use the Juno, you do this, and in a DAW, it's like I had a Juno. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, Juno, one, uh, one and two, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so basically you have a master a sequence or a keyboard, so everything basically yeah. is controlled yeah. from one spot? Or yeah, I have, a I have a controller, uh, which is, uh, sometimes it's the, um, the Arturia, and, uh, and I have also another controller, it's an Ovation, I think, 49. Uh, because in uh, there is like kind of like night arpeggio modes, and sometimes I play with that too. Also, what I also like to do is like uh, if you have like an arpeggio sound that uh, you make an arpeggio sound in an analog synth, and then you and then I re arpeggio the sound you know <laughs> with the other arpeggiator, and then you get like sometimes crazy, crazy glitches. So that's also something you can experiment on. I do that actually a lot. Uh, and you and you get like crazy results, you know, of that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, is uh, is uh, what's the name of the doll? I forgot. Uh, 
is logic a remainder? Or yeah. You yeah. But I, I'm using. Uh, well? No. Uh, for live shows, I use Ableton. Yeah. Don't ask me why. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah. I think it's understandable. Well, I never went to, I'm going to be honest, I never went to Ableton because when I saw Ableton and I was looking at it, it looked like an old PC program from 78. And, and that's uh, the reason why I never get into that. And I'm also stubborn, you know, in my head, I'm like, oh no, it can't be as good, you know, uh, as Logic. But actually, it is as good as Logic, and in some things, it's even better than Logic. Logic is much more complex, you know, in all the windows that you have, and, and in in, um, in Ableton it's much more structured, and it's it's yeah, it's really done for for life, you know. The only thing is like the recordings, the algorithm that they use for me is not so performant than the other does. Uh, And that was also a funny story when uh, I went to a Tony Maserati, like a Grammy Award winner, and um, there were like all the people, and he was saying, yeah, about about uh, about um, uh, I what's the other DAO again? Uh, no, 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 that everybody's using. I did the really known one, the really well known one. Ah, uh, oh, come on, Holly. No, no, it's Pro Tools, yeah, Pro Tools, and uh, and he he also, you know, I I told him honestly, I said, listen, I think for me, Logic sounds better in recording than Pro Tools, and then uh, and then there were other guys not agreeing with me, and then Tony said, yeah, I agree with you, and then the guys were like, you know, so 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 sorry. So you're saying that uh, when you're recording stuff, a uh, DAW makes a difference. Yeah, of course. The because every DAW has like another another uh, another thing to program and to approach and to put the ones and zeros into place. Yeah. Of course, it makes a difference. And also, uh, but everything makes a difference. Eh? Uh, I'm on uh, an Aurora, which is uh, yeah, it's not cheap, but I need that because uh, I don't want to be frustrated in my head to think. Oh yeah, there's something better, and maybe if I had something better, it would sound better. Now I have the Aurora, and there is no excuse. I, I for sound card. Yeah, for sound card. Mm -hmm. So there is no excuse. I cannot be. I cannot blame it on the sound card. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get rid of things. It's not out of snobbism or out. Oh yeah, it's it, it's expensive, and I want this. No, it's just for me. Okay, this is sorted. You know, I say to myself, don't come with lame excuses. This is the best sound card, and you know. The same with monitors, I guess. Yeah, the monitors I have. Uh, yeah, the monitors I uh, I purchased in 2020 at uh, the Dutch and Dutch, like uh, a guy from uh, Holland, uh, which is a completely different approach of monitoring. Uh, but since I have this monitor, my work is like uh, I work much quicker. Um, the hesitating in the, it's you know like in in this kind of music, it's the bass. The bass is very important. So when your monitors are, are, when your bass, when you can hear all the frequencies in your, in your bass, you know, it's becoming much easier to mix a track and you see directly the faults, you know. Uh, um, so yeah, the guessing is, if you have like very good monitors, the guessing is over. But then again, you know, I, I don't think any of you need that because, um, uh, because of, um, yeah, you can, you can, you can do stuff on, on, on like, uh, you know what's really a nice monitors is the GBLs. I worked like all, like years on the on the GBLs, like the studio monitors. Great monitor, really great monitor. I I fired them on for to let them for a guy you know who wanted to test them and and I, I fired them on and I was listening. I said, wow, it's actually it sounds it's 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 an amazing monitor. But monitor is taste, huh? you know, like uh, people like Genelec and I hate Genelec. Don't. Don't ask me why, but I don't like generic. It's all a matter of uh, of taste. Again. Yeah. So yeah, I guess we're gonna start to do the selfies now, dudes. Maybe we can hear another jam. Yeah. Or yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wait, so is this snare drum program thing? You know, 
capable de se tic tac tac tac
question because you have uh, these drum loops there which are of uh, yeah. 126 all of them so they automatically adjust to the tempo you said no or gets you, or you, se you selected uh, no drum it's loop specifically it's for that it's tempo. just me <laughs> yeah. no 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 they 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 are just I just look at the samples they get become the right BPM no 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 I have no, no, no idea how those work actually therefore no no they they <laughs> automatically <laughs> adapt yeah yeah okay. yeah yeah so yeah so any other questions anything are you into modular Yes, I'm starting to get into Muller. Actually, I made a track called Varna, who was uh, made uh, with um, only a 909, the basic only a 909, and then with the black sequencer, with uh, the black VCO, some reverb effects on it. And, uh, and then after when it was in the computer, I just added like, um, a vocal. So yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm still uh, learning because it's like it, again. You have to be busy every day with that. You know, it's it's a whole uh, it's a whole learning experience. But when, uh, when did you start to get into? Uh, I started to get in two years ago. I guess it, it was during COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but but then again, you know, in in. Uh, Modular, it's like if it's to make like simple patches, you know, you, you can just buy a synthesizer, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's more when you want to, it's so much more than just making sounds, you know, it's like you, you can create whatever you want again. It's like endless possibilities. You uh, told, told us uh, that you're a Lego fan. Do, do you see similarities? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, because Lego I have under control. This not. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, this not, no, no. But, um, yeah. And also, don't forget, they say in the 90s, uh, yeah, they used all this analog stuff, but it's not true, because we all used, like, digital stuff. We were using, like, uh, GV 1080s, which is the most digital synth, you know, you can imagine that uh, we were using samplers. Of course, we had, like, the analog mixing board and the analog uh, uh, effects, but the analog effects were actually already digital. So, um yeah, we, we never came to that, you know. Uh, there was no one uh, patching uh, uh, System 100 uh, from Roland to making techno. It made no sense. It was all sampled based, you know, a lot. And, uh, but now, yeah, Eurorack is becoming like kind of a, it's kind of like being in a culture, eh? it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really a, a, a culture uh, phenomenon. So uh, it's, it's uh, you, uh, I, I don't see it as, um, when you go to Superbooth in Berlin and you see all the people, I don't see it like, uh, yeah, uh, people are making music with it, but some people are making noise with it and some people are making like effects with it. And it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's a whole culture. So, yeah. But to me, it's uh, more like, uh, what I like is, is you know, like, um, there's like a, an input for the delay, you know, when you, when you send the pulse or, um, a trigger to uh, the delay uh, time it changes but then you know it, it, it gives like a lot of possibilities and it's it's exactly what I did with this track with Vanna you know I, 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 I used a lot of inputs on the reverb and then the reverb became started to shift it like with the sound and it, it became interesting so yeah. so therefore it's it's interesting but then again eh, this is like uh, like the sound toys, uh, like I know the sound toys like this. Yeah, you have to learn it really that, that, that you know, okay, I want to have this effect, so I have to go to this module and I have to patch it like this to go to that. So that's, that's how I want to use uh, your rack, but I'm working on it. You know. I bought too much stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, it's okay, let's buy this. And, that, and, and, and it's, I have too much that I have to, uh, I have too much that I have to learn in Europe. Like, so. Do you perform live with Modular? Uh, the one in France, it was partially with uh, Modular Life, yeah? Mm. Like a baseline, uh, baseline's effects, um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, 
and I had Perkins with me uh, that did like a lot of the rhythms. Uh, yeah, that was my first uh, experience with your rec life, actually. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah. I really like it, yeah. But then again, you have to be busy with it every, every day and you have to know... Uh, and sometimes you, st you, stumble on, you stumble on things in that you, oh yeah, wow, it can do that also. So it's also uh, uh, the happy accidents, you know, with stuff like that. So, yeah. Sound synthesis tool, right? Sorry? Yeah, you can uh, find interesting sound synthesis uh, like uh, uh, routings. Yeah. So you can maybe later remember them. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, and the thing is also it's it's uh, one trick pony. When you take the cables out, the sound is gone, which is cool with me because uh, when you record it into the DAW, you know you, you have it and uh, you can still play, and or you can take like a snippet and then put it in a sampler again, and then and then and then there you go. Then it's it's again another another uh, yeah. Uh, and for effects, from what I hear, I understand you pr prefer you not using sync so much for tempo-based uh, no. effects, but mostly by ear. Yeah, because it, it gives like it gives like more feel, you know, when you uh, when you uh, when you do it uh, manually. Yeah. Don't forget again, I come from the analog domain. We didn't. Yeah, you had like a chart, like a printed chart. It says 122 bm if you want this uh, that. Uh, uh, okay, and then like, but you you you, you want to go quick, and and then you you didn't look at the chart because for me the chart you know was Chinese you know, and and so I did whatever, and then it sounded okay, but like if it was like a, a skilled or a schooled engineer, you know, he will never do what I did because for him it was not right, but for a, then again for techno you know it was right. Sometimes you put like a delay like I did now you know on the, on the kick drum. And because you do that and you put it like in, you, you, you turn the delay a certain way, you know, it becomes thicker. Mm -hmm. That's something that the sound engineer will never discover. Because why do you want to put like a delay on the kick drum? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> yeah. There's no, there's really no, in electronic music or like in techno music, there's really no rules. But again, like I said, don't do like all the rest of you. Do something else, you know. It's nice to copy stuff, you know, if you want to learn and you want to learn. Yeah, and you say, okay, I want to copy uh, Boris Brezhna or uh, Charlotte Tovita or I want to copy uh, Insider or something. But, um, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's cool, you know, because you're going to have, you're going to be satisfied because, oh, wow, I can, I can recreate that song. But after you learn the skills and everything, you have to really, you know, try to do something. Yeah, try to do something new in music. So, yeah. It's like finding your like, own voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what I did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's uh, the message for uh, every artist. Yeah, yeah but the problem, the, oh, yeah, the problem, I always say this, no, it's not a problem. Yeah, the, the thing, everybody is like his own record label now, so there's so much coming out. Um, I'm lucky if I send two main DJs that they listen to my track. You know, I'm, I'm, and they really listen to the tracks, you know, or they play them or they say, okay, it's not for us because, yeah, but we like, we, we, we really like this, 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 and this, so they listen to the track. But uh, do you really think like, uh, let's say Charlotte Vita, she receives like thousand demos a, a, a day. You really think she's gonna listen to thousand songs? It's impossible. Mm. It's just impossible. If you think that you're, wow, you're, uh, you're a believer and it's uh, it's it's not how it works. So uh, the thing is always what I also is like to work in. Co if you like, you have like a community in Riga with let's say twenty or twenty five people who work make techno who work together. Don't work against each other. Really work together because if you work together, you're gonna uh, you have ten friends and you have twenty friends and he has ten friends and and then suddenly when you all work together, you had like a community easily from thousand people who's gonna listen to your music that the whole community is making. That's how, how we did it. Now there is a lot of, uh, like you will never hear Charlotte Vita play a record from Amelie Lenz and Visa Versa, or Adam Bay who plays like a Charlotte Vita record, if it's not on his label, and even if it's on his label. So there's like, a, 
they say, okay, we, know, we all know better and now we make our own music. And, 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 uh, and that's a little bit of a pity. Also, in, in my days when I played live, you know, the DJ stayed in his club. Huh? Clubs now, do in, especially in Belgium, it's more like polyvalent things where there are parties and they, and they, and they invite the DJs. But in my case, was the DJ play, stayed in his club and the DJ played my records, the boss came, wow, we're selling more drinks on that record. What's the record? Oh, yeah, it's Insider. Okay, book the guy. We need to book the guy live. <laughs> no, no, but that, that, that's, that's how it went. And, and then so they booked me, you know, and, then, and I played every weekend, three, four, five times, you know, because I was booked in Germany and in Sweden, and then they booked me in all these clubs because the, the tracks worked, actually, in the clubs. But now that's over. Now you have the DJs, they're making their music, and they have two million followers on Instagram, and... Uh, and 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 uh, it's a whole different game. It's all about numbers. It's not about uh, you know the music is the, the music is just a fill up uh, for Instagram mm -hmm. on a platform that they don't don't own. And production wise, do you actually do also collaborations? Do you enjoy collaborations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, still. Else? Yeah, still. Or, or no, 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 no. Still, yeah. Yeah, still. Uh, uh, I do, yeah, I do co collaborations. Do you know how boring it is to be alone in the studio for 32 years? <laughs> <laughs> it's super boring, huh? No, no, I, I, do, uh, I do collaborations uh, if I can. I'm working with a guy now who is into... Uh, 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 I did with Mark, with Zeno. Uh, I did uh, the track who came out on Cocoon Records. That I did uh, uh, the one, something flash on r &S I did on my own. Uh, and now I'm working with John Oceda. It's a guy who makes like Italia disco. So you see, I'm, 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 I can really, uh, yeah. Electronic music has no, it's not like techno or bamba or no, 42. You know, I can really make everything. You know, I can, I have tracks that, that you would say, wow, it's far away what, of what you know of me. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, I do collaborations when I feel it, and I still feel it's it's interesting, and uh, um, and uh, yeah, and it's especially for uh, your health condition to uh, not be uh, because I have no windows, so I'm like under the studios under my house, so yeah, sometimes it can be like a little bit crazy. So, looking forward for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>